Hi, I'm Andre and I'm going to show you how you can create awesome animations using the Molecular Simulation add-on for Blender 3.0. The first step is to download the Molecular Plus add-on from the GitHub page. We'll head over to the Releases tab and from there we can download the latest version. I downloaded the 39 underscore win version because I am on Windows. Now we can hop into Blender and install our add-on. We can go to Edit, Preferences and Add-ons, and then we can hit the Install button and find our zip file. Once you've installed it, you now have the option to select the Molecular Plus add-on. And once you've enabled it, you can now save your preferences so you will not have to re-enable it later. Now let's create a scene using the Molecular Plus add-on. Now we can add a plane in using Shift A and scale it up. You can see the commands I'm using in the bottom left hand corner. We can select the cube and then click G followed by Z to move it up in the Z axis. And by tapping R twice we can position the cube onto its corner. Now let's start adding some physics to the scene. In the top right hand corner there's a small arrow you can press. From there you can click on the molecular plus tab. And here you can find some quick actions that will help you set up the scene. We can click the plane and set collision for the plane. We can select the cube and add 3D grid to add particles inside the cube. The particles have been added inside the cube but we can't see them yet until we go to objects properties and then set display as wire. If you want more particles inside your cube you can change the size option. Smaller values mean more particles. Just make sure to click 3D Grid after you're done changing this value to apply your changes. Right now you can press Start Simulation and this will run as expected. However, let's get a bit more advanced and add some linking to the particles. We can go to the Physics Properties and then select Link at Birth. This will connect the particles when they spawn into your scene. Once you've clicked this, a bunch of options will appear. The most important option is the one labeled broken. When you decrease this value, particles are more likely to break apart. If you set higher values, they are less likely to break apart. For this scene, I found a value of 0.11 worked well. However, I recommend experimenting because your scene may be different. This is looking good, but by default, particles are rendered as halos. We can see if we jump into rendered view, these particles do not cast any shadows. However, we can fix this easily by adding in an icosphere and then moving this out of the render view to the side. Now, we can go to particle properties, object, instance object, and setting that to the icosphere. Now you should see the icospheres appear as the particles. However, there's still no shadows. This is because before we set the viewport display to wire. We can set that back and now you can see shadows appear. Now we're done. All you need to do is add some awesome materials and hit render and you'll be left with an awesome animation like this.